Hey guys, my name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. Today we're going to be finishing up our series on compositing an image in Photoshop. During these past two weeks or so, we've built this image up in Photoshop. We've cut out our model from a white backdrop. We've made sure that she blended in perfectly with the new backdrop. We added some crows into the image and played around with some blurs to add a bit of depth into the image and also retouched our model skin. Today we're gonna finish up the image uh, with some color grading. We're gonna add a vignette around the image, uh, maybe play around with some creative blurs and maybe even add a bit of noise. But with that said, let's get started. So this is the stage that we are at in now after the last few videos that we've created. We have our model on the background, we have added the crows and blurred them in a few several ways to create some depth into the image. And now uh, the composition itself is ready. Now what we have to do is uh, color grade the image. So as some of you might know, I use the curves adjustment panel for this. So we're gonna open it up, move the image. I'll just actually zoom it out a bit like this, we see the image. And for those of you who don't know how the curves adjustment panel works, you can uh, Google uh, our color grading tutorial that we created uh, a few months back. But I'm gonna go through this really quickly so you understand how this works. The curves adjustment panel has uh, four different channels, the RGB channel, uh, then the red, green, and blue channels. This line here represents all the points in this image. This bottom point here represents the shadows of the image and the top point here represents the brightest highlights and these around here represent the midtones. Now, for example, if I want to add some blue into the midtones, I just create, create the point here and pull this curve up. Now we added blue into the midtones. The opposite of blue is yellow, so if I pull this down, it adds yellow into the uh, midtones. Now for this image, I'm going to add a bit of blue into the shadows and probably add just a tiny bit of yellow into the highlights. Let's see how it looks. That looks good. I'm going to add just a bit of yellow into the highlights. Then we open up the green channel. And here again, you add some green into the midtones or if you pull downwards, you add some magenta into the midtones. Magenta is the opposite of green. For this image, again, we're gonna add, add green into the shadows and a bit more into the midtones as well. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave the highlights like they are. I'm not going to be adding or decreasing green in the highlights. And then we can open up the red channel. And here again, it works just the same way. We can add red into the midtones, or if we take some red away, it adds cyan, which is the opposite of red. For this image, we're gonna actually add a little bit of cyan into the midtones. I think this is pretty good, yeah. So now what we did, if you go through again, with the blue channel, we added blue into the shadows and added a bit of yellow into the highlights. The green channel, we added uh, green into the shadows and midtones, but didn't touch the highlights. And in the red channel, we added a bit of cyan, which means we decreased the redness in the midtones. That's pretty good. I like how the image looks like. And next, what we're going to be doing is adding a vignette. I want the viewer to focus mostly on our model and not uh, to wander around the edges of the image. And the best way to, to make sure that the viewer focuses on an area that you want them to focus on is darken up the areas that you don't want them to look at. How I add a vignette in Photoshop is I create a new curves adjustment layer here, pull down the midtones, probably about like this, and now I use the lasso tool. 
I take the lasso tool and now this might look a bit strange but just uh, bear with me for a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these random selection. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the areas that I want to have the light in and the areas that I don't select will become darker. So this looks a bit random and that's because it is random. The selection is very random but now when we fill in this mask with black so I have black as my background color here so I can just push down the command and delete key and fill in the mask with black. Now you can see we have this random uh, selection and we have these random areas of black uh, or dark and bright. Now we blur this mask using uh, using Gaussian blur and around 90 pixels looks pretty good we could even lower it a bit 75 around 75 works at least for this image just experiment slide around you can start from here and then kind of put it up more and more until you get to a number that you like 64 looks pretty good also so I'm gonna leave it on 64 and click OK this way, when you do a vignette uh, using these random lasso selections, uh, you make sure that the vignette looks a bit more natural. If you look at our layer mask here, as you can see, now we don't have, or now we have this random uh, areas where we have a bit brighter, a bit darker areas, and the light plays around the image in a bit more random way. And that way, the vignette doesn't look as photoshoppy. So let's turn this vignette back on. Great. So now we have the vignette around the edges. And the next thing that I still want to do is I still want to make sure or enhance the effect so that our viewer uh, really, really focuses on our model and not the edges. And how I do that is I'm going to create a blur around the edges. And uh, we're going to do it so that we push down the Shift, Alt, Command and E keys, which creates a stamp visible layer. So what that means is it uh, merges together all, all the visible layers below it and creates a new layer, as you can see here. Then we go down to Filter, Blur and Iris Blur. This is probably one of my uh, favorite blurs at the moment. How this works is you can move this blur around and shape it in any way you want. And this area here between these balls that you can also move, this area will stay sharp and then it will blur, the image will blur itself as a gradient uh, or in a more of a gradient way from here with a light blur until you get to the edges where we have this total blur, blur, blurriness. So I'm going to create this blur around here. I want to have some blur up here at the edge, but still keep my model's face as sharp as possible. I think this position here looks pretty good. You can also select how much blur it adds. You can really create these uh, super blur if you want to but I wouldn't go uh, that far I'll probably add a blur of about 17 that looks good into, for me um, or maybe usually when you get to a number that you like what I've noticed is the best bet is to decrease it a few more pixels because we just tend, tend to overdo stuff when we use Photoshop so I'm gonna use a blur of 14 pixels and click OK now it's it's loading uh, the blur and now I can show you guys the before and after if you look at the edges or look at her hands here I turn it on and off you can see now we have a blur around the edges and now again what this did for us was now the viewer really does not focus on the edges of the image but straight focuses on this sharp area where our model is. But this blur itself looks a bit artificial, a bit photoshoppy. So what we need to do is we're going to add some noise 
in the blurred areas and that way make it look a bit more real in a way. So how, that, how we do that is we're going to add a new layer, go down to edit and fill and fill this layer with a 50% gray. Then on this layer we go to filter, noise and add noise. Here you can decide now how much uh, noise you want to add. You can really add like crazy depending on what, what you're going for. I'm gonna add about let's say 14 percent and you can choose yourself do you use monochromatic or not. I usually use monochromatic so I'm gonna use monochromatic now as well and uniform is good so then we just click OK and now we have this noise layer but we still have it gray so we need to get rid of the gray and how we do that is we go or change the blending mode from normal uh, to soft light. Now we got rid of the gray and we only have this noise uh, in the image but as you can see we have noise uh, on our model's face and on, on the sharp where areas as well and that's something we don't want. We only have need, want to have the noise uh, in the areas that we've just blurred. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the layer mask and paint with a large black brush on the areas that we want to keep sharp and get the noise away from there. So for example our face I'm gonna just lift my flow up to about 50 and now what I'm doing here is I'm just painting with a large black brush on the areas that I don't want to have the noise in and leaving the noise in the blurred areas. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna lower the opacity of this layer just a bit because I feel there's a bit too much noise now. So let's lower it down to about 80%. That looks good. This just made the blur look a bit more natural and not so photoshoppy again. And that's really what we're going for. Even though we're using Photoshop, we really don't want people concentrating on the fact that we've used it. So if it looks Photoshoppy, we've kind of failed in a way. But yeah, now we have the vignette, the blur, the noise, and we color graded the image. I'll just group all these changes that we made and turn them on, uh, on and off for you guys to see. like that. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this series on compositing an image in Photoshop. And as always, if you have any questions or maybe requests for future episodes, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. But with that said, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed and see you again next Tuesday. Bye.